Hello everyone and welcome back to another video about fish and whatnot. Um, this video is kind of me just rambling about fish food. There is a giveaway attached to it. If you want to see that, it's more toward the end of the video. But I do hope you'll stick around and watch the whole thing. And I hope you enjoy watching it as well. So without further ado, let's get into talking about some fish food. Now, 15, 20 years ago when I first was keeping fish, it was by the big giant thing of tetra gold fish food or whatever flake food came in a big giant container. And just feed everything that and pretty much hope it was eating it. Then fast forward to last October when I got back into the hobby. Everyone's videos that I was watching was like feed a variety of food, feed a variety of food. So I went on a bit of a fish food shopping spree and bought a nice little collection of fish food from various brands and figured I'd give them all a try and see what my fish liked and what they didn't and just kind of build my own idea of what kind of food I like feeding my fish. So for this, I'm going to try and go brand name to brand name and then go from there since I do have several things from some brands and then one random thing from other brands. So the first brand I'm going to talk about that has, in my opinion, been a staple in fish food for years and that would be Tetra. Now I know there's a lot of people, from my experience lately, that don't like Tetra because they feel like they have a monopoly on the market and that the food might not be that good compared to others that are newer. But from my personal experience, my fish love them, they're healthy, so I still buy it because it's been what I've been buying for 20 years now. So the first one is just the standard Tetra Tropical Flake. I get the Min version because it's a smaller flake, I guess. I'm really not sure. I just bought the Tetra Tropical Mix that I saw. So I basically this food is universal i can feed it to anything and everything will eat it so i can give it to the beta sorority tank i can give it to either of my community tanks and everything eats it from the cory caps to the betas to the various tetras the rasporas even the shrimps and snails will eat it if it flows down to the bottom of the tank this is just a really good staple food which leads me into the tetra color I specifically picked up Tetra Color because I was watching a video and someone mentioned that they only feed Tetra Color to their fish and it brought out the color in there so I figured I'd give it a try. So what I did is since I had about half the bottle of my regular Tetra Tropical Flake left I just mixed the two and I like to crush up my food so I'll stick it in the jar and then I'll swirl my finger around so it gets smaller so that when I go to feed a pinch of food I just pick up a pinch and I can just drop it in instead of picking up a flake and crumbling it. So I ended up with like a 50-50 mix of the Tetra Color and the Red Tetra Tropical Flake. And the third Tetra product that I have is the Tetra Pleco Wafer, which is advertises the complete diet for algae eaters. And it's also made with zucchini. Now, the reason I picked this up is because I was keeping Plecos for the first time, and all the videos I watched on them said, make sure you have food for them besides just the algae in the tanks. So I was like, okay, so I went on Amazon and I searched up Pleco food or algae food, and this is the first thing that came up. And since I was so used to buying Tetra products, I figured, let's give them a shot and see what we get. So I'm sort of happy with them, sort of not. My shrimp like them more than the Plecos. The Pleco will nibble at it but it's not compared to the other food so this is kind of an eh for me the amount of shrimp love it and so i feed it to them more than the plecos at this point now moving on to another company that is a staple in this hobby that would be api now up until december november december i didn't know api made fish food i thought they just made the chemicals that we all put in our fish tanks so i was a little surprised now the reason i started looking at api food is again the pleco and because diverse diet and variety of foods. I wanted a second algae wafer. I saw API. I was like, oh, I'll give it a shot. The API algae wafer, the plecos like. The betas even eat it. The mollies and guppies will peck at it too. The next API food is the API tropical greens. Now, I picked this up in case I needed a high fiber, more veggie ish food for fish that might get bloated or something. I need to clean them out. And I also got it because after doing some more research on guppies, I saw that they like more greens than regular fish food so I would supplement this 
with with the, the tetradropicals flakes from before so i'd give them every other day i'd switch it up or i'd go every third day and give them some greens so they had some variety in their diet and that brings me to the third and final api food now this food i got for my quarry cats after i again did some more research on them compared to what i've done in the past and realized they're not just cleaner fish they'll eat and clean up the algae and stuff on the tank they actually do need food so i went and got these because again they were one of the first things that came up on amazon when i searched bottom feeding food and it's api so i know they've been around so i figured i would try them and honestly my quarry cats love them the mollies love them other fish will go at them as they sink so this is in my opinion another good bottom feeding food that i have next i'm going to move on to the brand that i'd never heard of up until again november and i ended up getting the majority of my food collection is actually this brand and that would be the hikari line of food now from what i've seen and what i've bought i've bought hikari wafers i've bought hikari pellets and i've bought the hikari freeze-dried foods i know they make other stuff but as of now i have not tried it so i'm going to start with the probably my most used hikari product and that would be their freeze-dried bloodworms now i had picked up bloodworms before for my beta fish when i first got them because i knew they liked that as a treat and the only ones i saw on the shelf at the time were the tetra ones so i figured i've used tetra food before i'll get it well the beta fish didn't eat it so i was a little weary of trying bloodworms again but hakari had a three pack on amazon so you got bloodworms you got the tube fix worms and you got their freeze-dried brine trip all for one nice cheap price so after the tetra bloodworms were a complete fail for me i got these in the three packs so i tried them out the second i put them in the tank the beta fish attacked them and loved them so then i'm just assuming the tetra was a bad quality or something i'm not sure so i would highly recommend the hikari bloodworms which is probably one of the most favorite foods i have on this list at this point now moving down to the next one the hikari i think the first hikari product i bought actually was the freeze-dried brine shrimp and again i had never used it before so i didn't know what to expect when i came in it basically comes in a cube and it's just freeze-dried brine shrimp um it actually smells pretty good it smells like a seafood salad so i was all game for it so what i quickly realized is i couldn't just throw the cube in because one of them was way too big for my tank at the time so it's only 20 gallons like 10 12 fish in it so i would just break a little piece off and then kind of sprinkle it in like I would do with flake food and the fish seemed to like it then the second batch I got the quality wasn't as good so I'm guessing it's hit or miss on good or bad but again I've only gotten two so I'm not exactly sure if they're all this way or they're all the way the first one was with the first batch I got being superb and my fish loving it and the last freeze dry hikari product that I have is the tube fix or tube fix worms however you want to say it again it comes with a little brick of food um, I was feeding it to my fish and then I noticed they were getting a little bloated so I started rehydrating a little bit I would stick it in a thing of water from the tank and then kind of swish it around to break it up so it got a little moist before they ate it then I saw on a video of someone making tips on how to take pictures of fish that they actually stuck it to the side of the tank like they just took it and squished it so I started doing that and the fish i liked it both ways so if you wanted to stick it on and forget it and don't lose the hassle of rehydrating it you can do it that way too but i would highly recommend rehydrating it first or squishing it because when you squish it it soaks up water so it's getting a little rehydrated because i have heard from other people in various chats that they did notice a little bloating issue when they were feeding the tube fix but again this is another food that i could feed to all of my tanks and everyone loves it so it's again up there on my highly recommend now moving on the next set are going to be the more pellets and wafers so the first one is the crab cuisine now this is i'm assuming for all shellfish because they have shrimp crabs hermit crabs and various things of that on the back so i got this because again watching videos people said you need to still feed your snails so i would just toss one of these in the tank every now and then that my snails could have something to eat besides fish poop and waste i again noticed the other fish were eating it more than the snails but no one really went at it and loved it as much so this one's kind of a no for me and for the next one we are back to algae wafers because i just wanted to spoil my paleco since i'd never had them so the api algae wafer is a little smaller than the tetra wafer but it's about the same style so the tetra wafers and the kari wafers is a little small disc 
probably about dime size, maybe a little smaller, like nickel size. It's kind of, it's hard and firm, and they, they just sink right to the bottom. The plecos tend to like the Hikari algae wafer over the Tetra algae wafer, so I would, I still buy or use both of them because I feed them to different things, so it's no problem with me. For the other Hikari wafer that I have, I have the sinking wafer, which says ideal for bottom feeders, it contains spirulina, silk, and krill. Now they have two kind of loach, they have a yo-yo loach and a clown loach and then a panda cory on the front. So again, I got this one to feed my corys and the plecos if they wanted a little uh, protein in their diet. Now, I don't feed this too often because the fish don't seem to go for it as fast as other things that I feed them. So I would say this one is an okay. If you have another option, I'd pick it up. But my fish personally don't seem to like it as much as other things that I have. And then the last pellet that I have from Agari is their micro pellet. This pellet is super tiny. Like it's the size of a salt granule pretty much. It's real small. I mainly feed this to my Celestial Pearl Danios because I didn't have anything else that was super tiny, and I'll occasionally throw a couple into my betas just to give them something else to their diet. Now it's a semi-sinking on the package. I want to go like 90% sinking, 10% floating. They all just kind of fall within a couple seconds. Maybe some will stay up for 10-15 seconds, but they all eventually just fall. And the last Akari product I have is the First Bites. Now this is one of their fry foods, and I picked this up because I had an unknown fry that I got in a fish order that came with some shrimp, and it wasn't eating the other fry food I had, so I threw it in here. I'm going to talk about this one later because I did something different with this than just feeding it straight up. Now the next brand that again I hadn't heard of was the Sarah food. Now I got this because I saw them on a, an aquarium co-op video and they called them Onip tabs and then I paused the video and looked at what they were because I thought it was cool that you could take a tablet and just stick it to the side and set it and forget it. And if you had people watching your fish you could just say here give one tablet to the tank a day and you're good to go. So I started off with the basic just it's called treat tab. It's the regular orange one that you've seen on videos. Little disc again about the size of a dime maybe a little bit bigger. Doesn't smell half bad. Um, let's see it says it contains bloodworm, krill, and tube fex in it. So things that I feed anyway. So yeah I like them because it's easy and convenient. You just stick it on the side of the tank and forget it. Then from there again surfing Amazon I saw that they had an herbal food or their spirulina tablets. So I picked those up as something else to give to my mollies, my guppies, and then throw one in for the plecos every now and then. And both of these I would highly recommend if it's the old formula. But unfortunately, for those of us that don't know, Sarah has recently redeveloped their products to be all natural, which means they took out our art anything artificial from their foods and made everything 100% natural. Now the problem with this is they melt a lot faster in the water. So when you stick the tab on, it slowly will degrade, fish will peck at it, and then little droplets fall down into the water column and the other fish eat it. The new food seems to decay much more rapidly, so it makes a bit more of a mess, and the fish can't enjoy it as long. Now I've also, this is hearsay, I have heard people say that their fish don't enjoy the new formula as much as the old one. So luckily for me, I pretty much bought out aquarium co-ops stock before they stopped carrying it. So what I want to do is I want to pick up for myself the new formula, try it with my fish, and just kind of test and see how much faster it decays and if my fish will still eat it. But if you can find yourself the original formula that does not say natural on it, I would highly suggest picking it up. And the other Sarah product that I got was their growth food. I think it's called Sarah Micron. And again, I picked that up for the random fry, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. Now I'm going to just talk about the sort of random one-off foods that I have purchased. The first of which was the Fluval Bug Bites, and it is the green one that is the bottom feeder formula, the smaller granule for small to medium fish. I picked this up when I wanted to do an assassin snap breeding project that didn't work out too well. So it ended up being mostly betta food. The good thing about these is they're super tiny, so your betta fish don't have as much of a problem eating them. And then I figured I would throw them in the community tank one day, and the quarry cats went nuts for them, which I guess makes sense because there's a quarry cat on the label. So this is another food you can feed your community tanks with flake foods or with other foods. Great for betta fish. I've even given it to the CPDs once or twice and they seem to like it. I throw it in the sorority tank and 
the Emerald Rest Boars I have on there go crazy for it. So it's another one of those foods that's probably going to be a staple in my fish keeping for a while. The next random one-off food that I bought was the Aquarium Co-op Easy Fry Food. I picked this up specifically because I knew I was going to be doing a guppy breeding project and I didn't want to try or have the setup for hatching baby brine. So I assumed since it was called fry food, it would be okay for the fry guppies to eat. And luckily, I was correct in my assumption that the name was exactly what it's for. Basically, it's Aquarium Co's own formula. It's like a powdery. That's how small and fine it is. And it comes in like a condiment bottle where you just squirt it. And it's the easiest food to feed. You open up your lid, you take it, you just give it a little squeeze, and it shoots out the tank, and it's wonderful. I have raised my entire guppy colony now just on this food. The adults eat it, the fry eat it, and the teenagers, we'll say, the ones that are a couple months old, also eat it. Now, while we're on the subject of fry food, I had some random guppies breed in my upstairs 10-gallon. So, because the aquarium co-op food was downstairs, I was lazy, didn't want to bring it up and down. So, I took the last few cubes I had of my Hakari freeze-dried brine, and I ground that up into a super fine powder, and was feeding it to that the guppy fry and they seemed to love it and they grew and I still have them so once I got the random fry in my shrimp shipment and I picked up the Hakari first bite and the Micron, I just kind of dumped those two in with brine shrimp and mixed it up and made my own like blend of fry food and the fish ate it and loved it so I'm gonna assume it works and the last food that I have is the Shrimp King food. Now, the reason I picked this up is because my water is extremely soft and there's like no minerals in it at all. And I have a shrimp snail tank in my basement. So I wanted to get a food that would give them some calcium to help with their shells. And I noticed that Shrimp King had a mineral formula that was specifically designed to give them a nice calcium supplement in their diet. Now, unfortunately and fortunately for me, when I went to purchase the mineral food everyone was sold out so i was only able to get it in the five in one packet which comes with their complete uh, mineral leaf pods protein and one other that i can't remember off the top of my head the good thing about this was is you get five small packets and you can basically try and see which one your shrimp like and how you like them i ended up liking all except for the leaf mix and the snow pops I noticed that my shrimp weren't as keen on the leaf mixer snow pops, and in fact the snow pops, it's not the same like consistency as the others, so it would deteriorate much faster, and my shrimp just weren't loving it that much. Now for reference, when I threw either the complete, the mineral, or the protein in, the shrimp would come out of hiding and swarm it. The snails, I've never seen snails move so fast before, like I'm not even joking, they would run straight to the food and kind of climb all over each other to get it. So it's a good food I would highly recommend. The only problem is it is super expensive compared to other foods. Like it's $17 for 45 grams of food, which is not that much, but it goes pretty far because one stick and it feeds. It's basically, it looks like a um, rabbit food pellet. So one of those you throw in your shrimp tank, depending on the size, and you're good to go. So while it is expensive, it makes up for it very well in the quality of the food in my opinion. And I just actually realized I forgot one of the foods on my list because it's one that I don't actually feed anymore. It is the Omega One Shrimp Pellets. I purchased these again, Cory Cats, wanting to give them some variety in their diet. Um, problem is, I throw them in the tank, they don't really eat them. Like, the other two I throw in, they'll swim at them and pick at them. These I throw in, they sink, and they just kind of sit there, and no one really goes at them, unless there's no other food in the tank, and then the fish will go and nibble at it. So unfortunately, it's not really up there on my list of foods I feed, and I really kind of just use it to cycle tanks. That's what it's become. It's an expensive tank cycle at this point. I just throw a handful in and let it rot. So yeah, not one that I would recommend to people looking for foods right now. So those are all the foods that I currently have. On my try list, I do want to try the rest of the Fubo Bug Bite formulas and see which ones my fish like. I know there's the Tropical Mix, there's a Beta Mix, and there's a Shrimp Mix. So I want to see how the Shrimp Mix holds up compared to the Shrimp King, and I want to see how the other two stack up compared to other foods that I have for my various fish as well. 
Again, while I'm editing this, I realized I forgot two other foods. I recently ordered the San Francisco Bay Cyclops. It's a freeze-dried Cyclops. It's a powdered food. It comes with a little scooper. I think they're making them now that comes with a little squeeze bottle you can put it into. Um, so far, all of my fish are liking it, so that's a plus. Let's see, it says good for baby fish that are egg layers and live bearers, small fish like tetras, guppies, barbs, and it's good for reef tanks and invertebrates. I'd say it's a nice little alternative that I can give certain tanks. So far, the fish I'm giving it to are guppies, betas, tetras, rasporas. They seem to be enjoying it, so I'm going to keep feeding it. I got the big jar because it was super cheaper to get the big jar than the little one, so I'm glad my fish like it, otherwise I would have been SOL. And I also realized that I completely forgot a food because I stopped feeding it after like two weeks. I, when I first got my betas, I bought the Aquion beta pellets. They are far too big for the beta, like way too big. So it, they have to munch on them and they try to swallow it whole and they can't. So I will definitely be sticking with the bug bites, the micro pellets and other smaller things for the betas because those Aquions are too freaking big for them. So 100% not recommending the Aquion beta pellets for your beta fish. Other fish, sure, you want to give them to some bigger tetras or even cichlids, they'd probably enjoy them if they have a large enough mouth, but anything smaller is not going to be able to eat that pellet super easy. So as of right now, it's just sitting in my cabinet as another one of those foods that I'll use to help cycle tanks when time comes around. So I guess to wrap this video up, I'm just going to quickly go with the top foods that I have purchased in my collection that will continue to be staples from now on. First, right off the top, is the Hikari bloodworms. Second is the Hikari tube fix worms. Third will be the Fluval bug bites, the bottom formula. Fourth will be always the Tetra tropical flake, because I've just fed it forever. And if I have to pick a fifth, it would probably be the API tropical greens, just because that way I have a five foods that I can always feed to all my tanks that everyone will eat and it gives everyone a nice little varied diet. So yeah, this was just kind of a general overview of my fish foods. I'm going to be going back and doing some slightly more in-depth videos in the future. So if you want to see those videos from me, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you are subscribed and make sure you click that little bell notification thing so you get notified or don't. Really can't make you push it. It would just be nice if you push it so you get notified when I make videos. But it's whatever. And no, the title was not clickbait. I will be doing a giveaway that goes along with this video. Um, it's going to be for fish food since the whole thing was about fish food. I'm going to do it internationally on the stipulation that I'm probably going to end up using Amazon for wherever your country or region is, so it might be something different for everybody. Now what I'm trying to do is do the Flugel Bug Bites, since they're one of my new favorites, or one of the Hikari Freeze Dried, either the two fix with Bloodworms. If I can't find those, I will send another one of my favorite foods at the moment that's on your region's Amazon. To be eligible for the giveaway, you're going to have to be subscribed to the channel, you're going to have to like the video, and leave a comment about anything you can just say hello just leave a comment on the video and that's all you have to do i'm going to run it from today when this goes up on may 30th and it will run until june 13th we're gonna pick a couple weeks so by june 13th i will pick a winner and i will contact the winner and get them some food and as always please remember to like comment all that good jazz comment good things bad things just say hello really anything so i do hope you enjoyed the video and i will catch you in the next one have a good day everybody